We'll talk about deep learning for anomaly detection. What we'll cover is a series of concepts and algorithms that are used to detect anomalies in data. We'll use the paper deep learning for anomaly detection as a reference. About me, I'm Dhruvil, a full-time data scientist and an AI consultant with Mark Tech Post. We'll cover topics like what is anomaly detection, why is it a hard problem to solve, types of anomalies, applications and different algorithms and lastly modern methods to perform these tasks. Anomalies are data points that are different from the usual pool you have. So if you have a set of data points that are similar and the next one is completely different so you would suspect that to be an anomaly. Often they are also called outliers. What makes it a hard problem to solve? Firstly, lack of labeled data. For any machine learning model, you need labeled data. Now, since anomalies are rare events, it is hard to get labels for those. Traditional methods don't scale well when data size increases in GBs and TBs. You often need real-time predictions for your application. Traditional machine learning methods have limitations in extracting information. Often, a manual intervention is needed to engineer the data for your machine learning model. Why deep learning? Firstly, because deep learning is highly scalable. If you use correct distributed computing methods, deep learning have proven capabilities in image, text and speech data processing. They can efficiently learn information without a lot of human intervention. There are three types of anomalies. First is the point anomaly. Let's say you have expenditures of 25, 60, 17 and 49 dollars and all of a sudden there is an expenditure of 12,000. So that is definitely an anomaly. Collective or group anomalies are anomalies that occur in group. So let's say you know there is a series of expenditure of 60 dollars. Now 60 dollars by itself isn't anomalous but having it in series this is definitely. Contextual anomalies when you consider space and time into account. So let's say you expect a city to have certain expenditure in a month but then next year at the same time the expenditure is 10 folds so that is definitely anomalous. There are many applications for anomaly detection like credit fraud, insurance fraud, malware detection, damage detection in machines through IoT data and a lot more. There are three classes of methods to detect anomaly using machine learning. First is supervised methods. Supervised means we have labels for every data point whether it is anomalous or not. Now this data is processed by the machine learning or deep learning algorithm and it is classified as anomalous or non-anomalous. The advantage is that uh, traditionally it works better than unsupervised or semi-supervised algorithms because you have all the information. Disadvantage is that you need a lot of human intervention to label the data which is not scalable as discussed earlier. Semi-supervised methods have a data set that belong to a single label usually in non-anomalous or normal cases. In this case, the model learns to predict one class instead of two in the case of supervised algorithms. Advantage is that it works better than unsupervised methods. Disadvantage is that it does not give you definite predictions and it is hard to measure the performance because you don't have the second class or the anomalous class to predict against. Unsupervised methods have no labeled data whatsoever. They rely on the assumption that it is possible to cluster the normal ones and keep separate the anomalous ones, you know, kind of geometrically interpreting them. Advantage is that it needs no label, hence the training becomes really fast and easy. Disadvantage is that you can't measure the model performance because there are no definite metrics like accuracy to measure against. Now modern research directions include transfer learning where model train on one domain is used to train on your domain or your on your task. 
zero shot learning is when you teach a model how to classify an observation into a class that it has never learned before ensemble learning is when you have multiple models that make predictions for the same observation this increases the confidence in the predictions and reduces noise reinforcement learning is when you ask a model to make predictions and it gets some feedback or some reward for that predictions and it learns through this prediction feedback loop 